welcome to the Dunkelgrün podcast. This is episode 22 and I am back after almost two months of a little podcasting hiatus. So thank you very much at this point for your patience. If you're a subscriber and you have been waiting for a new video to come, I'm sorry it didn't happen sooner. It was a turbulent time these last two months. I celebrated my 30th birthday at the end of May and then summer started and at some point, I don't know, there were always things happening on my weekends and I couldn't podcast. It was also the Football World Cup uh, or soccer if you're in the US and uh, my boyfriend and I really like to watch football so a lot of weekends involved also football watching instead of podcasting. So please forgive me for that. I am back today and I'm looking at a table in front of me with a lot of different wonderful yarns and new projects that I would like to talk about, so I think it's going to be a nice episode. Also towards the very end we are going to have a giveaway winner, or actually two giveaway winners, for our self dyed cal in the Ravelry group. Speaking of the Ravelry group, um, I have done a few um, little updates to the group and we have now also a little chatter thread where we can meet and chat and do a little bit of small talk also during times when I am maybe not uh, present here on YouTube. So uh, feel free to go there, also feel free to ask questions in the question thread or show us um, what you are dyeing or what you are knitting on. With this, let's get started right away with finished projects, because I have a finished project for you today. And it is my Exploration Station Shawl. Some of you might have seen a little hint about that already on Instagram. This is, as many of you are perfectly aware, a pattern by Stephen West. It was released originally as a mystery knit along, I think in 2014 or 2015 already quite some time ago and I was a fan of this pattern right when it came out already and never got to knit it and last year we started our self dyed cal in the Ravelry group where the goal was to dye your own yarn for your project and this was my project for the cal but at some point I don't know why I lost interest a little bit and so this pattern um, went into a hiatus for more than half a year it was, I was not working a stitch on it for more than six months, certainly. But thanks to a lovely viewer uh, who is Bits and Needles on Instagram, he also lives in Zurich and he um, posted a picture of his exploration station that he also did not work on for quite a long time. And then I was just commenting on it that I should really get working on mine as well. And he said that we are going to have a informal knit along <laughs> just for me. He was really nice and uh, motivated me to keep going um, on my exploration station. And I have to say this little kick in the butt worked. So now it's done, it, the ends are woven in and it's blocked and I couldn't be happier with it. As you can see, it is quite gigantic. It is, I think my wingspan or a little bit more and I am one meter 70. I don't know how much that is in feet. So it is pretty large and I think it's the largest shawl that I have ever knit because usually I prefer smaller shawlets that I wear like that. But I still think also this shawl can be worn pretty nicely like that and it's just a bit more chunky than other shawls are so I think it's quite nice. And the yarn is fingering weight yarn that I dyed myself. As I said already it was a project for the self dyed cal and it was um, a single uh, superwash merino. I'm going to show it to you. So this is the yarn that I dyed for this project. This is actually as much as I have left over, which is actually quite a bit. I think at least 50 grams of each um, color I have left over and it was a, a hundred gram. No, maybe of one I have less than 50 grams. I don't know anymore. I have put it in my Ravelry project page if you're interested in making the exploration station and would like to have that information. So I was talking about how I dyed that yarn and that was um, all naturally dyed. This wonderful yellow here is onion skins, this is the brown 
onion skins and I would say if you are new to dyeing and would like to give natural dyeing a go, you should really try onion skins because they are easily available I guess to most of us and the result is so easy and so beautiful. Of course you have to like yellow. The second uh, yarn is dyed with indigo, which is a more challenging color to achieve with natural dyeing because it requires some special steps. I have a little video about that, um, or a, actually an episode in which I talk about that also. Um, and this is... I love indigo, it's just great. I love the, the shade of blue that it creates, it's this beautiful sky, water blue. It's just like nice, I really like it. And the other two were both dyed with walnuts. And this was a bit of an experiment because I didn't have any walnut husks because all the trees that I could find around me had no uh, husks or maybe I was a little bit too late already. And so I started to use leaves, walnut leaves, but they were giving a bit more of an olive greenish shade. That was not what I was looking for. I wanted to have this really dark chocolate brown and a more caramelly brown. That was what I wanted for this shawl. And so I over dyed it in the end with uh, walnut husks, but this was a powder that I purchased from um, Spicherhandwerk, which is a um, fiber shop and spinning mill here in Switzerland. And there I um, bought this as a powder. I think it was a powder or it was a granulate of walnut husks and with this I could achieve this dark brown and also the caramel uh, with the second bath. And that's all there is to this shawl. I have to take it off again because it's a really hot summer day. We're in July already and it's really hot in here and I'm going to have to take it off. So about the knit, I really enjoyed knitting the shortcut rose, which is this um, starting place here. This is the West Nets shortcut rose, as he calls them, which is knit in short rows, as you can imagine. And this is really, for me, the most fun part of this shawl. And also this is a, a motif that appears in the Dotted Race shawl, which I have knit already by Stephen West. And I really like that because it's very entertaining. And then comes the Brio suction here, which is um, in the blue and the caramel brown here. and. For many people who knit this shawl, this was the first time that they have ever made brioche. For me it was not. I have actually already learned brioche as a child. And it was not so much fun for me to do brioche over such a long row. It, it's a really long row. And I mean brioche is fun. It certainly is fun. But it's also a bit boring. It's a bit like <laughs> plain stocking net if you're, if you're getting very familiar with it and very used to it. So. Uh, I didn't enjoy it that much, this brioche section. And then this one here, this slip stitch section here, is actually really pretty. The one that is um, yellow with the caramel brown uh, accents on it. This is really pretty, but it's a bit complicated for me. I was sick when I was working on that, this, I, this much I remember. And I, I remember that it was um, hard for me to realize on which row I was. To, to because it had it consists of several kinds of rows. I don't know anymore exactly. It's a while ago. It was last autumn when I worked on that. And I remember that I didn't enjoy it so much because it was a bit hard for me. I know not which row it was. It was hard to tell if the next stitch should be slipped or, or knit if I was out of pattern. You know, you cannot miss that because it's one slip one, uh, knit one, something like that. And you need to know which has to be worked with me. And the bottom here, just before the lace, this blue and yellow part is um, actually just knit stitches. It is also called the just knit section and this is um, fine to do. It is fun that you can just knit and uh, you still achieve such um, a little kind of a double garter ridge. And then the bottom, of course, is... whoops. And then of course the bottom is a lace pattern, which I like to do. And this I was doing while watching football actually. And at the end it took me one half of a football game, which is 45 minutes, to knit one row of this lace. So thanks to football games I managed to work through it. And um, yeah, in the end there is an I-cord bind off. This for me actually is not such a hurdle to do. Many people complain about long I-cord bind-offs. For me, that is fine. I like to do the I-cord bind-off. It has a nice rhythm to it. 
I don't know, everybody has different preferences. But if you're wondering if you should knit the shawl or not, absolutely, I think, because it is really cool and a very nice way to play with colors. And the finished product is just um, really cool. I wore it to work once because I just had to, even though it was hot. And I received a lot of compliments for it also there. So that's my finished project and uh, now let's move on with knitting in progress. I have some almost finished things to share with you. The first one is also a project that I have shown um, in the previous episode already. And this is a pair or a triplet, let's say a triplet of socks, because I want to make three socks out of a sock blank. This is the first sock that was already done in the last episode. And this here is the second sock, which as you can see, there is a gradient happening, like we come from the first sock, we go into the second sock, because this is knit from a sock blank, and I want to cast on also a third sock um, out of the rest of the blank, which is this part, of course, it's going to start here with the green, uh, bluish teal, and then go into blue and purple and this fuchsia color. So this pair of socks I am making for my sister, or this triplet of socks. In the beginning I wanted to make four socks out of this, so two pairs, but then I realized that one sock um, for my sister, who has larger feet than me, um, takes up more yarn, so I will only manage to make three socks out of this blank. And this blank is called a sushi roll, and it is uh, by easyknits.co.uk, and I bought that at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And as you can see, I haven't blocked my socks yet, so they are still a little bit wonky. You can see that there is a little bit of texture here. This is just because of knitting with the unraveling yarn. But you can also see already how nice the colors are playing together if you knit from uh, a gradient sock blank. I really like them. And I think the last one will be and I think the last one will be quite funky also because I think actually it has the most color action happening here in the last segment. We certainly have not so much of that purple as we had yellow and green here in the beginning. Maybe this would have been really cool for a shawl, this blank actually, where you would start with the purple in the beginning, where the rows are still pretty short and then as the rows get longer and longer you would have more um, of each color, which would actually be quite cool for a shawl because if you have even sections of colors in shawls, then in the end you're just going to get very thin stripes, but like this you could still get thicker stripes. Anyways, I thought it was nice for uh, socks, and my sister is li um, likes to wear different colored socks, so I think that's going to be fine for her. I don't know yet when I will cast on that third sock, I guess it will be, as always with me and socks, at a point where I'm going somewhere, I'm traveling somewhere, or I'm commuting, and I don't have any simple a stocky net kind of knit to take with me and then I usually cast on a sock or uh, take a sock uh, project from my selection of projects. But right now I have also another uh, simple kind of mindless knit so to say and I'm going to show it to you next. The It consists of two parts and it's a baby knit for uh, one of my best friends who is expecting a baby in just a couple of weeks, so I have to hurry up to get this ready for her. And this is the first part of it. This is a little baby romper, and this one is actually already finished and blocked as well, and also the ends are woven in. Let me try to arrange that a bit. It's uh, It doesn't have any buttons yet, that's why it's a bit hard to show, but I'm gonna hold it here. So here at the top are two straps and there are going to be two buttons here and then it is just this little romper and here at the bottom it will also have some buttons to close it up here. Here it is open now and then here is the space for the legs. And this is a pattern by Ogi Knitwear Designs, I think. And the whole set is called Spring into Summer Romper and Jacket, I think. Um, I don't know why spring into summer, I think this could work for the whole year, especially because it is knit out of DK weight yarn, so I think this will be very nice also for the autumn 
and it is the six month size that I have knit here but I have to admit that I didn't do a gauge swatch because I think it's pointless to do a gauge swatch for a baby knit for a baby that is not yet born even because you don't even know how big or small it is going to be this baby every baby is different and so I didn't do a gauge swatch I think it is slightly larger than the six month size but then again not every six month old baby has the same weight and size so this is the first part of that gift and the second part is currently on my needles. It lives in this uh, wonderful project bag which has been made by my friend Raquel Francia and I really love this bag. It is currently my absolute favorite project bag and I like that it has this um, purple color inside and as you can see my uh, project that is inside fits really well with it. And this second part is a little jacket that is going together with the romper and if I take it out it just looks like a complete mess. <laughs> it is a um, sideways knit jacket and it will need to be seamed so I will fold it in half now so that you can see that it actually will be a jacket. So as you can see it's knit flat starting here from the arm and then um, all the way up here and then you make the the sides everything is knit flat in garter stitch and in the end when you seam it up you're going to have a finished jacket and I really like the colors I didn't talk yet about the yarn I forgot it is um, of course I dyed the yarn myself I really like when I'm thinking about a new project especially a baby knit I like to think about the color and then start with dyeing the yarn for the project and I'm going to show you the skein. Here is, I have two actually, um, this is the yarn, it's my uh, organic merino DK weight yarn which is an eco superwash yarn and I dyed it in this wonderful teal color. I have two, the other one is a little messy, oh yeah it is attached to the project <laughs> because this is the other side of the cardig of the cardigan which is um, first knit separately and then joined to the rest. So actually this is quite an interesting knit because it's just simple garter stitch so you can easily knit it while watching football or uh, being outside and talking to people but it's not too boring because you have always little places where you have to increase or then you have to bind off some stitches and then again knit 10 centimeters or 4 inches um, plain garter stitch. So it has a nice um, rhythm between easy uh, mindless knitting and uh, some more interest. So I think it's quite an entertaining knit. And that is the second ball. I am alternating the two skeins a little bit, but not really alternating. I just knit the sleeve in the first um, color and the first part of the body and then the middle part I knit with the second skein and then the rest in the end I will again knit with the first skein because they are slightly different. I dyed them in the same pot but this technique that I use here which is just spotting on some uh, color because I wanted to have these green flexes, maybe I can show you those green flexes here. Um, those green flexes, can you see those? And these are a bit more prominent on one skein than on the other. So that means I had to um, yeah, mm, arrange a little bit the distribution of the two skeins on, this, on the yarn. And also the other yarn that I used for the, the romper, that's the same yarn, that's also the organic merino decay. And I dyed it myself. It was quite challenging actually to achieve this beige brown color because I mixed it out of the primaries which is magenta, cyan and yellow and black and it was a bit of a challenge to get this light color because of course you cannot add a lot of dye because otherwise it gets too dark immediately so I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It reminds me of sand and this one reminds me of the ocean and I think together they will make a very nice so I hope to be able to finish it this week because actually I would like to give it to her already next weekend but if that does not happen then she's going to get it when the baby is born and um, yeah we're going to see. <laughs> 
And with this we get to the next work in progress, which I have now not touched anymore in a couple of weeks, but for quite a while it was uh, my only piece that I was knitting on. I was working on it quite monogamously and it lives inside my Lamy project bag, which is made by my friend Martina from Slovakia out of um, plant or I have to say indigo dyed fabric and this is also one of my absolute favorite project bags. I actually have two of her project bags and I think they're super cool because they're made from very sturdy canvas and here this little tassel I put myself. This was a test tassel that I made for another project and then I didn't know what to do with it so I put it on the project bag. And in this bag lives a sweater design or a sweater knit that I am making up as I go and you have seen it before on the podcast it is a has a color work design here at the bottom which when you get closer you see that it is this snow flowers and at the top it is more plain and then here is now the neckline I can actually I'm a bit close today to the camera, I'm sorry. Here you can see the, fu the full uh, thing that I have now. And the next step is to pick up uh, sleeves and uh, pick up here around the armholes and knit sleeves. It is going to be a drop shoulder construction, as you can probably tell already, because it is a pretty square piece. It has no shaping on the body. And um, yeah, the thing is, I want to have this pattern that I have here at the bottom also on the sleeves and I still need to calculate um, a bit how much yeah like how many stitches I can have because they can only have certain numbers in order to uh, be a multiple of the repeat and then I need to figure out how many I want to pick up around here and at which rate I will decrease to get to this number that I will need in the end to have enough or the right amount of stitches, the right number of stitches to do this repeat. And I think I will also alter this repeat a bit, it will not be the original one like here. And this requires a little bit of brain power, a little bit of sitting down and um, working with Excel. I like to work with Excel spreadsheets when I calculate things like that. I also did that here for the neckline. And yeah, that will just require a little bit of brain power. I don't really have any moments where I feel relaxed enough and drawn to that because I'm just doing too many things at the moment, I guess. Another thing I wanted to show you for this design is what I did with the neckline. I used a knitting graph paper, which I got from Trixie Knitter, trixieknitter.com. And um, this was an A4 sheet of uh, graph paper, which has the same dimensions as a stitch and knitting. So it is not a a square, it is a more a rectangle, and then I glued two of these pieces together of these A4 sheets, and then I drew on my um, my shoulder neckline area so that I could plan on how to knit the decreases and everything. So I think that turned out really cool. And in the end, when I was lying down my my actual knit onto this, it really worked because luckily these stitches here have exactly the same um, gauge as my knitting project here. I think you can also find that online um, with different different gauges with different stitch sizes. And I'm sorry about the light. We have a hot summer day and we're expecting a thunderstorm later in the afternoon and I think right now clouds are coming and going so you might experience light coming and going. I'm sorry about that. It's just how it is. The yarn that I'm using for my sweater is one of my favorite yarns and it is uh, Lana Rara yarn, uh, which is a Swiss yarn that is made out of rare Swiss sheep breeds. Here is their tag. And these are the two colors, natural, and this one is called Rauchblau, which means smoky blue. And I love them, I think they're so pretty. I have other colors of them. They have also a beautiful olive green and a fuchsia color and I think also a bright red and a yellow I think they have also but I only have the fuchsia, the green 
the natural and the blue um, in my stash. And I had this yarn already for quite a long time. I bought it right when they brought it out because they are just two um, amazing ladies who have come up with that company and they produced it in a quite a small batch and I thought it will probably sell out quickly, which it also did. So right when it came out, I bought a couple of skeins to have in my stash, no matter um, if I didn't know what to do with them yet. And that's also a thing sometimes. I didn't know what to do with it and it needed to be something special. And um, I don't know, at some point I realized um, I didn't find a pattern that I wanted to knit with it. So I came up with my own and it is non-superwash yarn. It is nice and toothy. Probably for some people it might be a bit scratchy, but it's really just a matter of getting used to for me. And I think it's actually pretty soft. It also has, it is uh, two thirds of the rare Swiss sheep breeze and one third of it is um, soft mulesing free merino wool, which is nice on the skin. Okay, so I hope um, I will soon find the motivation to pick up those sleeves and do the calculations necessary in order to know the number of stitches that I need. And here's again the pattern. So that was it with knitting, but I also did a little bit of spinning during the last couple of weeks. And as you know, I am working on a um, spinning yarn for a sweater, as you know, if you have been watching before, because I have talked about it already quite a lot. I am working on spinning um, plain natural colored BFL in order to make the Telia sweater by Jenny Steingas. And um, yeah, it sounds like a really tiring thing to do because you have to spin quite a lot of yarn. I think I need 400 grams of the main color and then um, I'm also going to spin some white BFL and some, um, some of the main color I'm going to dye some of this um, natural brown or beige oatmeal color here I'm going to dye in order to make the color work accents. And here are two skeins that I have finished already that are roughly DK to worsted weight somewhere. So they are, um, one is 125 grams and 243 meters and the other one is 105 grams and 179 meters. So they are roughly DK to worsted weight and I really like them. I really, really like that yarn. When I see it, in my shelves, I, I really love it. It looks actually quite a bit like a mill spun natural yarn. Quite proud of that. But it still has these characteristics of hand spun that makes it so nice and special. And the BFL is just really soft and it's non super brush, so it's really lovely. And here is the little bit that I still have to put on this um, bobbin before I'm going to ply for the next skein. And then I just have one more skein to spin and I am really slow with that because I don't I have weeks and weeks where I don't spin and then suddenly I spin a little bit and at the moment it's actually Tour de Fleece which is the spinning event for most spinners in the world and um, I don't participate officially I'm not part of any team but I'm trying to spin a little bit for every day of the tour and so far it was doing I was doing pretty good this week there were just two days where I could not spin because I had um, planes after work and I was not at home and I like to spin at my wheel uh, because I want this yarn to be consistent so I'm spinning everything on my Ash for traditional spinning wheel and yeah as I said before even though it might look tiring to spin 400 grams, especially if you spin that slowly as I do, of the same boring natural colored yarn. To me it is something really meditative. It is more relaxing than knitting because I can just, when I spin I try to just think of nothing else, just um, breathe and feel the rhythm of, of the spinning wheel and the, um, the way I draw out the fiber and this has some really meditative feelings to me and I don't know I can do it much better when I spin than when I knit I can really focus on just breathing and spinning and that is really nice and relaxing also so at some point I will reach also a place where I have enough yarn for the sweater but in the end it also doesn't really matter to me it's about the process and about touching this nice fluffy fiber <laughs> 
So with this we are done with all works in progress, knitting or spinning and I would like to talk just a little bit about a natural dyeing uh, session that I did. I am not doing as much natural dyeing this summer as I did last year unfortunately. Last year I had no um, work to do, I was off after my PhD so I had a lot more t uh, time on my hands to do natural dyeing this year. I am working on my uh, job at the library and so it's sometimes a bit hard to find free time for dyeing. So nevertheless I did a session of dyeing with matter and matter is a root of um, a plant and you get it either in powder form I guess or in those chunks of the root that are uh, quite nice. You can already see some of the red color in it and um, the recipe that I had is from a German book by Dorothea Fischer. I will put the name of the book here. And um, in the recipe it said that the matter root has to be ground to a fine powder. And so I tried to do that with an old coffee grinder that I once got at a flea market, which is really, really pretty. But unfortunately it's not working so well anymore. So I'm going to put a clip in here of that beautiful coffee grinder because it's really, it was such a pretty uh, thing to look at. But unfortunately the grinding did not work so well. So what I ended up doing, I just put the matter in the pot as it was, I didn't even care. And it was 25 grams of matter. And I um, simmered, no, I, I think I just put it in the cold water and let it soak overnight. And then the next day I simmered it for one hour. And my yarn I mordant it with a loom and I have to put it here on the screen, I don't remember. Um, and then I put it in the matter bath and let it for one hour. And this is the wonderful coral color that I got. And now in this light it is just glowing, it's so beautiful. I really love this red, it's so bright and nice. And this is just sock yarn, it's um, merino and nylon sock yarn and I like it. And then this was only 25 grams and 100 grams of measure, so 25% of dye material. I suppose if you would use more like 50 grams per 100 grams or even 100 grams, then you would get a deeper shade of red. And one thing that is really important with matter, if you're curious to dye with it yourself, you should make sure that the temperature of your bath uh, does not exceed 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. This means your water should never be boiling. You should keep it below simmering because when you um, boil it, you will get brown shades instead of red. Of course, that might be something you're after. You want to might want to have a brownish red, then it's absolutely fine. Please boil it. But if you're after these uh, reddish shades or salmony shades, make sure that your water is not, not hot. It's just, um, it's easiest if you measure the temperature with a thermometer and just be careful to turn off the hot plate um, often and not let it uh, boil. And another thing I noticed with the color was that um, the pH had an influence. If I took out a little bit, I unfortunately didn't take any videos or pictures of that. I might have to do that someday. I took out a little bit of the dye pot of the dye bath and added into it some uh, vinegar and in the other bit I added a bit of um, baking soda which is a base and um, in more basic conditions the um, water turns or the color turns more reddish and in more acidic conditions it turns more orangish yellow. So if you have troubles to get the red um, it might also be a good idea to check your pH because I think it should be around neutral or basic. It should not be acidic. Otherwise, you will turn the color into more orangish, yellowish shades. So that is just a few observations that I made. And then with the same water, I dyed also some more skeins. The next ones are all more light colors. So this is a dusty, nice rose also on sock yarn. And you can see there are a little bit of variations in it some darker spots and some lighter spots. The next one is uh, dyed on organic merino decay, which is, it looks a little different to that one. It's a bit lighter still. It's a very nice salmony shade. I usually don't like pink, as you all know, probably the ones who know me, I'm not a fan of pink, but these kind of shades I can 
become friends with. I think they are so nice and natural and beautiful. But I also don't think that they would suit me very well because I'm a pale person, I don't get tanned very easily, I have dark hair and um, brownish, greenish eyes, but still I am not a person who tans easily, so these kind of colors I think make me look pale, I think I would not like to wear them. This is a different story, maybe this I could wear. I don't know. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do with them, um, if I will knit something out of them, I think this would be pretty cool for a baby girl. My friend who is pregnant is expecting a baby boy, so that's not for her. So yeah, we're going to see what's going to happen with them. So with this we are already arriving at the end of the episode and I would like to announce the winners of the last part of the giveaway of the self-dyed cal in our Ravelry group. So the self-dyed cal has now come to an end but since it was so nice to see all the things people were dyeing and knitting out of their own hand dyed yarns, I have decided to keep uh, two other threads, one for the dyeing part and one for knitting out of your own self dyed yarns. And there uh, people are welcome to keep sharing their adventures and their dyeing adventures and share their proud knits with us or it can be crochet or weaving or any other kind of craft whatever you make with your hand dyed yarns or fibers or fabrics and so please if you're still interested in that please come on over we have a really lovely um, group of people there who are very talented and who know so much who are able to inspire us and share their information with us so in order to conclude the self dyed cal, I want to uh, pick two more winners for the entries in the chatter thread between April 2018 and now. And I did that this morning and it was um, quite a lot of posts. It was from post number 718 to post number 966 and there I picked two winners. And the first winner is going to win the um, this lovely skein here and this is my yarn base that you have seen already on the podcast my organic merino DK which is um, a DK weight 240 meters for 100 grams and has uh, an eco superwash treatment so it is not like normal superwash yarns but it's still easier to dye so it is an eco-friendly process and the wool feels a lot more natural but still it is easier to dye and to work with than a non superwash yarn. So this skein is going to post number 792 and this is Ravelry user Sepia and her name is Pia and she lives in the Netherlands and Pia has um, entered a dyeing experiment with avocado leaves, no not avocado leaves, avocado skins into the um, into the self dyed cal and she has over dyed it in the end with food coloring because she was not happy with the color and then she knit this lovely hat out of it so I think she deserves to win this prize and I think actually she did a second project she made also a pair of socks a beautiful pair of socks out of her own hand dyed yarn so congratulations Sepia you win this skein of yarn Please get in touch with me, send me your address and I will send it out to you. And the second prize that I have is these two lovely skeins of yarn that I have shown off on the last episode of the podcast and they are something really special. They are naturally dyed and it is Spanish merino wool that has been um, superwash treated also with an eco treatment and I have to say it actually feels pretty similar to my own um, yarn that I have here and it, the special thing is it is 100% Spanish and it is also hand dyed in Spain by this lovely person Tintica and she has also a YouTube channel where she shares her dyeing adventures I think mostly in Spanish but I think there's also a little bit of English content here and there and if you don't understand Spanish I think you should watch it anyways because she has such beautiful beautiful images that she takes and she has such beautiful footage she's really an artist and she shares 
uh, information on the process and everything and the philosophy of natural dyeing. I think it's really nice. And she has donated these two lovely skeins of Tintica yarns. One is dyed with mild pomegranate, this is the yellow one, and the other one is something like Tina. Or Thina. I don't know what that is actually. It might be some Spanish plant that I don't know, or I might be not able to read it. I don't know. Yeah, this is a sport weight um, yarn. And the winner of this is post number 910, and it is Fanny Marie. And I know Fanny had a higher chance to win a, um, a giveaway in the thread because she is one of my lovely Ravelry moderators, so she was writing many more posts in this thread as other people, but she has also participated by herself in the cal and actually the post that was picked was one in which she shared her project which was the I think the sage leaf cardigan or something it was called a cardigan um, with some beautiful leaf pattern here that she knit out of her hand tied yarn so I think Fanny especially also because she's the moderator and she worked so hard in the group and um, taking care of it I think she absolutely deserves to win these two skeins of yarn and yeah, funny. I think I actually have your address somewhere because you have already sent me something once, but I don't know anymore where you have it. So please also get in touch with me or I will get in touch with you and send me your address. So that was it with today's episode. I Unfortunately, I don't have any fiber science for you today. As you have noticed, I have started to release them in separate little videos uh, to not make the podcast episodes too long. Another advantage of having the fiber science in a separate video is also that it's easier to reference them or to link them to someone who is just in for interested in that um, scientific content and does not want to watch the whole episode of the podcast. So... Um, if you have any suggestions on what the next fiber science video should be about, please leave it in the comments below or in uh, the Ravelry group. And uh, yeah, come on over to the Ravelry group, hang out with us. You can also find me on Instagram as Dunkelgrün and I try to post sometimes a little bit in my stories when I am not podcasting so that you can see what I am up to. And I hope you're all having a lovely summer, go swimming and have barbecues. And to those of you who are in the winter time, I hope you have a very cozy winter. And yeah, I hope to see you soon in the next episode. Bye.